As anyone who's watched the channel for a few years will know, I love single shot rifles. The Merkel K3 was a favorite of mine for affordability, quality, and finish. This is the Merkel K5. It is looking like it's going to replace the K3. Let's have a look. So this is actually the DS Arabesque model. DS stock, Arabesque action with the standard open sights barrel. The wood comes in on the Arabesque, I believe, at a grade five. But to be honest, but the grades are so close together with Merkel, just pick a piece of wood you like. Between a grade four and a grade six, you can find qualities in each of those that you will enjoy. This piece of wood is quite light, nice fiddle back, good character. It's very nice. A lot of people would probably prefer darker, but actually against the silver action, it looks really good. Rosewood grip cap, laser checkered. It's a nice thing. And the oil finish on here is very, very good standard. Nicely filled grain, good glossy finish without being too thick and shiny. The back of the DS docks, you have an open cell recoil pad. Really nice, because it's gonna take the kick out of this 3006, because unsurprisingly, this crazy lightweight rifle, when you pull the trigger, they do flip about a little bit. They, <laughs> they kick less than you would have thought, but if you're used to a big heavyweight foxing rifle or a big heavyweight varmint barreled rifle in large calibers, it does come as a bit of a shock when you shoot one of these. You have a folded cheek piece there. Oh, I always love the way these look. The effort and attention to detail on them is lovely. The way they catch the light, the way they make the wood grain look is just a lovely, lovely feature. Sling studs are quick detachable with a little push button and just done on a very small stud fit. So instead of a very large hole, it is nice. Just, again, there's attention to detail that it is very nicely put together. Rosewood grip cap, as I said, and a slightly fuller pistol grip than the K3 had. You'll notice here it also has an adjustable trigger, which the K3 did not have. Whether that's an upgrade or not, well, that's entirely up to you to decide whether you think that is the case or not. The trigger is non adjustable in weight, but is adjustable in length. On the K3, you'll remember there is a three position setting, so you can have it medium, light, or heavy, depending on where you put the thing. This trigger breaks just under two pounds. It is beautifully crisp, and I believe we went inside the K3 in one of the videos. This is made to a very similar standard, a slightly different design, meaning that it's like a watch inside. It is engineering perfection, it's beautiful. The safety catch or cocking mechanism has changed ever so slightly as well. On the K3, you have to push it up, then push it up to pull it back. This gun, you just pull up and push back. It is certainly, it feels like it's running on a slightly nicer bearing than the K3 with less resistance. And although it's a less positive move into the ready position, because there's no click, if you like, it just falls into place. It feels a bit strange at first, especially having used sort of K3s and that system for a little while. However, once you get used to it and the fact that you can just give it a little pull and it falls out of its position and comes back is quite nice. As with the others, if you push that on and then open the gun without firing, it does de-cock it. The forend, slightly different profile to the K3. Again, adjustable or sorry, removable sling stud at the front and comes with this pull-off lever. The arabesque action actually is really beautiful. I liked the K3 Extreme, it was simple. It was nice, it was good price, and looked really good. Actually, this arabesque, it, it looks a little bit, it looks better, like the engraving quality and standard is very nice, it's well executed, it's well designed. It's everything you could ever want, really. And it's also a little bit shallower than the K3. You'll also notice that it doesn't have the side plates that the K3 has that held in this. For this now, is removable. This little plate, little tilting block plate, pops out by just pushing this black button down and taking that out uh, renders the gun completely useless. This locking plate, when the gun closes, actually closes up that breech face, which gives you a really good consistent closure. The gun is locked and held by these lugs in the base of the action here that lock into the bottom here. It's a great design and actually where the K3 feels like it was designed perhaps more for the purist, this bridges the gap into the, the, the techie rifle market a little bit nice. It's got a few gizmos and 
is engineered to a slightly higher standard with a few more modern features perhaps than the K3 had. Very nice. Nice to have actually that on there. To go back in, quite simply, just pushes, pushes down into the action and pushes back. Take that, push that, and the thing falls forward. Say so it could not be easier. What this means more than anything is that this gun can be changed in caliber very easily. Unlike the K3 that it takes a little bit more to change the caliber because you have to take the side plates out, knock a pin out, take this face plate off if you're wanting to move to different barrels. Slightly slimmer action, perhaps a little bit more sleek in the lines. There's a lot about this gun that I like more than the K3 and there's a few things that perhaps I don't like quite as much. But that's the beauty of any new model when the original was very good is they have to work very hard to improve on it. The barrel is the same high standard barrel as the K3 and they come with the same accuracy guarantees. These guns, again, are designed for long range Alpine shots, so will remain accurate at 300, 400 yards. However, unlike those heavier guns, that take a little bit more learning at those long range shots. They are a lot less forgiving. Um, and now having spent a fair amount of time behind them, they are wonderful, but you just have to work them. They, they don't let you get away with silly mistakes like a bigger, heavier gun would. The front sight is adjustable, it's sprung loaded. You just adjust the screw there and that will lock it into its position. And the rear sight is windage adjustable. Again, the gun is set out for the same mounting system as the K3. So there's a great array of swing off clip on mounts, Piccadilly rails you can clip onto here. Perhaps would have been nice to see them use a more common mount, but it seems anybody in this sort of market is aware that common mounts are not going to be an option. So you're gonna to have to buy either the Mac mount, the Merkel mount, and the Recknag will do one as well, all of which are exceptional quality. How do I like it? Well, to be honest, it's really hard to make a small lightweight gun badly when you put enough into the engineering quality and finish quality. The only time you ever see these lightweight guns fail is when they are made on too much of a budget. It's probably the best thing. These guys do not fall into that bracket. They feel great, they heft well. You know, you pick them up, your eyes are straight down those sides you know that you're gonna do some serious business with this gun. We spoke in other videos about where this gun lies, and it's clearly not a fallow stalker's gun or a fallow colors gun, but for somebody who's gonna go out and fire a few shots, go, I mean, go and shoot a deer, reload, go and shoot another deer, this is the perfect rifle. The reality for most of us people who shoot for pleasure, even relatively large numbers of deer, is the chances of you needing a fast follow-up shot if you've made a mistake and you're not out to kill big numbers of fallow is, is pretty minimal. When you do make a mistake that's that bad, the deer will run, and if you knock it over, you've... I've seen people reload and shoot second deer quicker and more competently with one of these than with straight pull rifles, so I wouldn't be put off by that. There's nothing wrong with just buying yourself a nice bit of quality, and I think I've said in previous videos, admitting that you don't need a professional colours rifle. You can have a rifle of extreme luxury that just brings you severe amounts of joy. And as we are, I feel like the K5 would do just that, the same as the K3 did. Very nice indeed. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Go and check out the Merkel K5s. And we'll see you next time.